we have seen that uh, for a given geometry which may be uh, such that it cannot be described in simple coordinate system, we can come up with a body fitted grid, one in which the coordinate lines follow the shape of the uh, uh, body in terms of uh, uh, especially the walls that enclose the overall control volume. We have seen that the generation of this grid is fairly complicated and you have to solve partial differential equations and uh, uh, repeatedly and uh, especially if you want to have some uh, control over the way the grid is structured and uh, not only that if you want to do uh, for example impose orthogonality condition especially at the wall you have to do some post processing you have to do further work in order to do this. But generally speaking it is possible to get uh, uh, a body fitted grid for a three dimensional uh, flow geometry using uh, the partial differential equation approach. The other alternative uh, uh, to this kind of structured grid is the unstructured grid and we have remarked earlier in one of the lectures that uh, unstructured grid gives us a fle great flexibility in dealing with complicated geometry and also it gives us great flexibility in terms of local refinement of the mesh. So the question is what kind of method or algorithms we can uh, use to generate an unstructured mesh. It may look trivial but uh, the actual problem is not so uh, easy and one has to make sure that the grid that we get is such that there are no overlapping parts and uh, therefore the uh, uh, internal meshing and joining of several points together to make up uh, control volumes and to make up the tiles is not uh, uh, a trivial thing, one has to do a lot of bookkeeping. There are many methods used by many researchers for uh, the unstructured mesh generation. In, in our course, we will uh, we'll look at only the case of two dimensional uh, computational domain and then uh, we can see what the issues are involved in this. We will not be dealing with uh, uh, every possible algorithm, but we look at a possible algorithm by which we can generate uh, an unstructured mesh for a given domain. If it is a, uh, a simple domain, it is not so difficult, but when we have what is known as a multiply connected domain, that is uh, a domain with holes inside. For example, you have you take a, a, a duct of rectangular cross section and inside that you put a tube and then the flow can take place only in the region which is not occupied by the tube. So that is an example of a, uh, uh, of a, a multiply connected domain. Essentially what we mean by multiply connected domain is that if we had a flow domain like this and if you were to shrink this whole thing right down to a point and if you are left with uh, uh, nothing there then it becomes a simply connected domain. But if you have a flow domain here which is not part of this, so this is not part of the flow domain, no matter how much you shrink here, there is this part which is remaining. So in that sense we call this as uh, a doubly connected domain and if you have two such things then it becomes uh, multiply connected domain and so on like this. So this multiply connected domains are quite possible if you are looking at for example flow through a heat exchanger either this type with so many tubes in staggered arrangement or if you are looking at flow with some baffle plates for flow distribution. These are the kind of things that uh, uh, that uh, quite uh, often uh, occur in practical industrial situations where you want to put some uh, uh, flow optimization devices within your duct so that the overall pressure drop is minimized or that the flow maintains uniformity or if you want to uh, reduce uh, noise and uh, so many other features for which you would like to intervene into the duct domain and then you want to make some changes to that. So in normal practice we do not have the luxury of simply connected domain, we have the practicality of multiply connected domains and we have to generate a mesh in spite of this complexity 
uh, that is there. <coughs> so we are going to look at uh, uh, the generation of, a, of an unstructured grid for a two-dimensional geometry. Extension to three dimensions is uh, on a case by cases and there are special algorithms developed for that. Now the <coughs> let us say that we have this as the flow domain. The objective of the grid generation is to discretize this domain into small tiles such that when you put all the tiles together you get the shape. And so we need to have points on the boundary and points in the interior also. And as mentioned several times that in a CFD solution we would like to have these points at which we want to evaluate <coughs> the solution variable. The number of points should be very many and they should be spread throughout the domain so that at every part of the domain we can make reasonably accurate approximations for the derivatives that appear in the governing equations. So we would like to have some way of spreading points throughout the domain not leaving out any any part and we also would like to have a method by which we take only the points which are inside the domain and not outside. So in the process of doing this we cannot take a point here because that is outside the domain and that is outside our uh, zone of uh, competence of our interest. So we need to have a very uh, uh, distinguishing algorithm, one which distinguishes between what is outside and what is inside and then only deals with what is there that is inside. And if there is a body which is inside this which is not part of the domain then that method should also make sure that this is a no go area and within that there should not be any points. So putting the points itself is one challenge in the general case. The second challenge is that we should be able to join this together in such a way that we get uh, tiles. For example, one can say visually okay, I will join these three points to make this triangle. How will I know that I should join only these three and not uh, for example, this, this and this and this, this and this. So I can see some areas which are overlapping here. So one should have, a firstly one should have an algorithm by which we can put points throughout the domain including the boundary and only on the boundary and including the domain not outside the domain. And one should also have an algorithm by which we can join them in a sensible way so that there is no overlapping, so that there are no nodes that are left, uh, uh, left out, so that there is no area of the tiles uh, which is left out. So these two uh, stages, one of putting points throughout the domain in as uniform way as possible, taking account of the boundaries inside and outside of the flow domain and secondly join them in a sensible way so as to get uh, uh, an unstructured uh, tile. These are the two stages of uh, unstructured mesh generation. <coughs> when we talk about unstructured, by definition it is unstructured so that the, uh, the tile that we have can be a polygon of n number of uh, sides. The simplest possibly is a triangular uh, uh, tile so that any complicated uh, uh, shape here can be put through in, uh, in the form of a triangle with one side always uh, uh, coinciding with, with, uh, with, the, with the boundary like this. So uh, triangulation of the flow domain is a very useful way of generating uh, uh, an unstructured mesh although one, uh, uh, one sees the structure in the sense that every part of this domain is a triangular, it is still unstructured in the technical sense that the points that we are looking at here are not associated with any coordinate lines. So when we talk about a structure, it is not about what elements we have made use of to discretize to make this up into, uh, cut this up into tiles, but whether or not 
the nodes that are associated with uh, with these tiles are uh, along uh, at the intersection of uh, uh, coordinate lines. So, in that sense even if we use the same element throughout it is still uh, an unstructured mesh as long as we make uh, the point that these points at which we which we are joining together to make the tile are not associated with uh, constant values of coordinate lines either x y z or uh, psi eta zeta uh, that type of thing. So, we are going to look at something like this kind of uh, computational domain uh, firstly uh, nodalized and then triangulated. So, when we say nodalized we would like to cover this entire area and only that area which is available for flow and fill it up with points. Fill it up with nodes spread, spread throughout with some notional distance between the nodes. We will see that we cannot exactly satisfy that uh, uh, the distance between any nodes is uh, the same for all the points, but we would like to have some uh, notion of what is the distance that we would like to have between nodes and we would like to honor that, that uh, particular thing. And triangulation here we would like to join up the nodes sensibly to make triangular tiles. In such a way that when we put all the triangular tiles together then we get the entire uh, flow domain and only the flow domain nothing beyond nothing less. So, how do we do this? We would like to describe an algorithm for each which uh, uh, appears to work at the uh, on the face of it and which has been successfully uh, uh, used in uh, uh, by our students to do uh, nodalization and uh, triangulation. Uh, so, what we are looking at is first part is to take a domain like this and we want to take for example, uh, a domain in which this is the uh, flow area and all this is wall. So, that it makes it some way a doubly connected domain ok. So, this is not a, a simply connected domain and we would like to put points throughout this. So, <coughs> how do we do this? We are looking at an x y plane and to start with we have a complete description of this bounding curve and this bounding curve. So, that we know the x y points at uh, each of this. So, we can start with at some point here and then go along this curve and then put boundary points at some uh, uh, distance which is roughly the distance that uh, <coughs> we would like to maintain between nodes. Now, what should be the distance between nodes? There is no single answer to that. The distance between nodes depends on what we can afford, because if we make the distance very small, then that means that we will have very large number of points and large number of points means that large number of uh, storage of, uh, uh, of the variable information and also large matrices in terms of a phi equal to b type of solution. So, that means large amount of computational time. So, we have to we cannot put very small distance between the nodes, but at the same time unless the distance between nodes is very small we will not get uh, accuracy in terms of uh, uh, representation of the uh, uh, first and second derivatives which appear in our governing equations using first order or second order accurate formula. Because we have to keep in mind that we do not have the luxury of going to 
uh, higher order of uh, uh, approximations in uh, uh, especially in the unstructured meshes and therefore, we have to uh, restrict ourselves to first order or second order uh, accuracy which means that the distance between nodes should be small. So, we should have a compromise between uh, the amount of computational uh, storage requirement and the time requirement for the solution of a phi equal to beta phi equations and the accuracy requirement that is needed. For a given problem it may not be uh, something that is known straight away, but at least we should have some idea of what kind of flow profiles we may expect and based on that we may want to get uh, we may want to have enough number of points if this is the domain length and if you are getting a velocity profile like this then we should have enough number of points to make like this so that we can join them by smooth line to get a velocity profile. So, if you want to get a if you want to capture a velocity profile like this then if you have only 4 points at which the uh, velocity is evaluated then we would not be able to get a faithful representation of this curve. So, therefore, one would say that for a curve like this we would like to have at least 20 points to be able to represent this that is a, a, a a useful number, but at the same time <coughs> if the the same number of 20 points will not be useful if we had a velocity profile like this, because this is a, a, a steep variation and probably in order to capture this we need more number of points here. So, we need to have grid points like this. So, from that point of view the distance between nodes is related to the kind of uh, flow solution that we are expecting and that we that we want from uh, uh, from the problem and it may not be settled right at the beginning itself. One may have to start with some uh, grid and some distance and then come up with the grid have a computation at the end of that we have to see whether the grid that we got is good enough. If not we can go back and remesh it with uh, more spacing or less spacing like that. So, in that sense it is some way dynamic process that uh, we have to adapt, but we must have some notional <coughs> idea of what this distance between the nodes is and also <coughs> in terms of the accuracy and in terms of how many grid points we can afford. Based on our computer uh, time and based on a past practice we may say that ok let us have 100 points in one side or we can say we, we can have a total number of 10,000 points for a two dimensional problem or we can go up to million points. If you are doing a time dependent uh, uh, problem with a very fine time step and then you want to go through a large number of computational time, you may not want to be uh, doing with 10 million grid points, we may want to come down to 10 to the power 4 grid points. If you are done with 10 to the power 4 grid points and then found that the uh, resulting there are lots of fine details that you want to resolve, then you may have to go you may want to go to a higher number of grid points. So, in that sense we have to suck it and see in a way if we have absolutely no idea of uh, what we have to do, uh, what the grid spacing between the nodes should be. But when we start the grid generation we have some idea we come up with some idea of uh, the distance between nodes and we can use that as a uh, measure to start the discretization of the boundary nodes like this and also the interior boundary whichever way whatever is all the boundary of the computational domain we have to do it. And at this stage we would like to number these boundary nodes like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and so on and it is usually to uh, uh, if you measure doing like this in an anti clockwise way the interior domains are measured are numbered in the clockwise way. So, that, that kind of thing is there, but at this stage what we are interested in, in is, uh, is to fill this domain with lots of interior points such that they are only interior not exterior and such that there is some defined spacing between the grid points. 
so that ultimately when we join them we have a size of the tile which is not very far from what we want it to be. Okay, so, how do we do that? We know that overall maximum height. So, this is the variation uh, of the minimum height and the maximum height and this is where the flow domain is constrained and we can divide this maximum or the delta y by that L which is roughly the distance between the nodes that we want to have and based on this we can draw parallel lines across this which are separated by these uh, uh, by the distance of L here and we see that this L uh, these uh, horizontal lines will cut this domain at uh, several points which we can find out. We know this curve and we know uh, uh, the equation for this we can find out otherwise we can look at we now what we are uh, uh, saying is that this boundary here is now represented by so many edges and that edge is a linear element between two successive nodes like this. So, this is a line and this is also a line. So, from that point of view we can check which edge is cutting is being cut by which line here. So, we can evaluate the points of intersection with of each horizontal line with the boundary and the boundary which is exterior boundary as well as the interior boundary. And so, now we take that part that line which has even number of intersections with the boundary. For example, this this line here has intersected uh, the total boundary at two points one point and one point here and this one also has intersected at this one has intersected at four points between this point this point this point and this point here. And if you if you were to draw a line here for example, this might have intersected here and here and here. So, that is an even number of things uh, that is an odd number of things in which case we would like to move this line slightly. So, that we have even number of intersections and uh, uh, odd number of intersections are possible when your boundary line for example, is also horizontal for example, if I make uh, uh, something like this and I am drawing my one of my horizontal lines to coincide with this then I may have an odd number of uh, things like that. Essentially what we are trying to do is that we want to uh, uh, we want to take those line segments between two successive boundaries. For example, I take this line here this has cut the drum, uh, the boundary at four different points and I I take this line segment here and then I put number of nodes such that they are separated by a distance of L 1, 2 and 3. So, I am putting internal points along the horizontal line segments which are bounded by two boundary nodes uh, uh, corresponding to this intersection here. So, similarly this point of intersection this point of intersection constitute one line segment which I break up into integral number of uh, small segments roughly of length L each. So, I put a boundary point here uh, I put this again I take this length here and I put this segment here I take this segment then I put 1, 2, 3, 4 that is a bit smaller, but it is ok. <coughs> Again I take this here and then I can 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, I can locate internal points along the horizontal lines that I have drawn in such a way that uh, two successive horizontal lines are a distance L apart where L is roughly the uh, the distance between the target distance between the nodes and so that the individual points that I have here are of the order of L distance here and they are also vertically of the order of L distance. When I take cut this segment also into this 
into uh, roughly length L. One can see that I have a point here, I, po I have a point here and also have a point here. If I were to join these, I would have a triangular element of roughly of length L as a side. So, that is the objective of this, side, this kind of nodalization. So, the whole objective is to put points only within the domain and not outside the domain. So, that we are ensuring by making sure that we are taking a, a line segment which is bounded on either side by the boundary. For example, if I have even number of intersection like two inter points of intersection, then I know that this whole line here from the first intersection point to the second intersection point lies within the flow domain and I can put internal nodes at each of these anywhere on this line and I put them in such a way that they are at length L apart here, 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 here. If I come to this line, this horizontal line has intersected the overall boundary at four points and I can evaluate these points of intersection and this point of intersection, this point of intersection and I can see that this horizontal line is now consists of it consists of three line segments. The first one which is within the flow domain, the second part which is outside the flow domain and then the third part which is inside the flow domain again. So, I take each line segment which is inside the flow domain and then I can put points which will be eventually the uh, internal points, internal nodes like here. So, in this way I can fill up the entire flow domain and only flow domain with nodes which are roughly a distance of L apart. And if there is a point which is lying too close to, uh, uh, to the boundary, then I can remove those points at the end of this. For example, so I have, uh, let us say that I have, uh, these are uh, the overall points here and I find one point here which is too close to this point which is uh, one of the boundary points. Then I have a choice of removing this completely or I can move it back along this, I can readjust the lengths here uh, a bit and do that kind of post processing. So, the, the algorithm for nodalization that is filling up the domain with uh, uh, points which are with nodes which are separated by a distance uh, uh, target distance L consists of breaking up the boundary which is a known curve into line segments which are a distance L each. That is the uh, segmentation of the boundary line both the inside and uh, uh, inside one and outside one. And having done that you look at the overall spread of the flow domain in the y direction. You can also do it in the x direction, but we take it in the y direction and the overall spread is this much and we draw horizontal lines within the spread which are separated by distance L starting from the lowest point here. And uh, so, these horizontal lines intersect the boundary edges at several points depending on what kind of internal uh, domains we have. They may intersect at two points or they may intersect at three points or four points or six points, eight points. If you have many such things then they can be uh, like this and they may be intersecting at a node at a boundary node or they may be intersecting between two boundary nodes like this one. So, if there, uh, now once we find out all the points of intersection. So, at this point we break up the, the entire horizontal line into line segments such that each line segment is bounded by the boundary points. So, if you have uh, <coughs> if you have even number of uh, intersections, then one can say between first intersection and second intersection is part of the flow domain, between second and third is not part of the domain, between third and fourth is again part of the uh, uh, flow domain 
and then the next one will be uh, not part of the flow domain like that. So, we can identify those line segments which are part of the flow domain and we break up each line segment again into small parts by placing nodes which are a distance of L apart. So, we do that consistently if there is any uh, horizontal line which is intersecting at um, odd number of points then we move the horizontal line slightly up or uh, uh, down so that we have even number of intersections. So, in that way we can uh, 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 we can break up the whole domain into horizontal line segments along which we put uh, nodes which are spaced a distance L apart. So, at the end of all these things we will have many points which are roughly a distance of L apart in the horizontal direction also in the vertical uh, direction not exactly L, but roughly a distance of L and then we see whether all the points uh, uh, whether there are any points which are lying too close to the uh, existing boundary nodes. If they are very close then we can delete those things because uh, if, if they are very close here then if we join them by a triangle then we have an edge which is very small and uh, that is not desirable. So, as part of the overall uh, discretization triangular element we would like to have an element which is more or less equilateral we do not want to have a node a triangulation which is like this with a very small node on one side and then large nodes on large uh, lengths on the other side. So, this is possible if you have a boundary node and if you have an interior node which is very close by. So, in such a case we just remove this and eventually when we do the triangulation this node will not be there we can make a triangulation like this that is more uh, uh, that is better than having uh, a triangulation which is very small. So, in this way we can do <coughs> uh, nodalization of a given two dimensional domain which may be either sim simply connected or multiply connected. So, the next uh, task is triangulation here. So, triangulation here means that all the nodes that we have uh, uh, put on the boundary and in the interior will have to be joined together in order to get in order to make uh, uh, in order to break it up into in order to make uh, triangles. For example, I can join these three I can join these so I can go on doing this but here I am making use of my eyesight and hand eye coordination to do these things, but we would like a computer to do this automatically and in such a way that uh, it does not do overlapping. So, we need to come up with a, a, a good way of doing this and uh, uh, <coughs> this is there are two algorithms which are uh, widely used one is uh, what is known as an advancing front method and the other is known as uh, Bellone triangulation. there are advantages and disadvantages to either of these, which is what we normally find in any uh, uh, any scientific domain. If there are two things then they must be they must both of them must have some advantages and disadvantages otherwise the one which has only disadvantages will not uh, will not survive except as a textbook example for example. Okay. So, as a uh, as part of a learning process we may cite something which would not work. So, that we can identify such uh, uh, non ideas right in the beginning itself, but these are both the methods are used and they offer certain advantages and also certain disadvantages and the advantage of, of a, a primary advantage of an advancing front method is that it can also deal with concave domains. When we say concave domains 
uh, something that is a flow domain like this and specifically the advancing friend method will make sure that no nodalization of this kind takes place that is the, it would not consider any point which is uh, uh, which has part of the domain which is outside this and whereas the linear triangulation may not be able to uh, uh, take account of this concaveness and it may come up with some tiles which have part of this uh, uh, outside uh, surface also included as part of the domain. The advantage with the Delaunay triangulation is that it has an inbuilt feature whereby we can uh, uh, triangulate uh, uh, for example four points in the best way that is possible. If you have four points here and if you want to this is a quadrilateral then one can immediately see that there are we, we can make it into two triangles. Uh, we can make it into triangles in two ways either like this or like this into two triangles like this or in this way. So, which of them is better? So, one is like one set of triangles like this and the other set of triangles is maybe some exaggeration, but uh, uh, it is like these are the two possibilities and between the two which are covering the same overall quadrilateral area one would prefer this because in this particular combination both the triangles are more equilateral than in this particular case. In this case we can say that that is almost equilateral, but this has got one side which is too small. So, this has a high aspect ratio that is the ratio of the smallest uh, or the ratio of the largest line segment to the smallest uh, line segment within the triangular thing can be taken as an aspect ratio and we would like to have an aspect ratio which we can say is L max by L min. We would like to have an aspect ratio of 1 so that we have an equilateral triangle, but uh, uh, for a given set of 4 points the, the learning triangulation uh, can try to choose that way of decomposition into triangles which has which gives us the least lower aspect ratio. So, it will automatically choose this particular way of discrete uh, of uh, triangulation and not this whereas, the advancing friend method it will take either this or this as it comes it does not discriminate between the two possibilities. So, the overall triangulation that we get with the Delaunay method has better aspect ratio, but it can uh, give rise it is not uh, guaranteed to deal satisfactorily with uh, uh, with concave uh, surfaces. So, if there is a concave part to the overall flow domain then we have to be careful and with the Delaunay triangulation, whereas if you have severe concavity then advancing method is preferable in, in that way. So, we look at the advancing friend method and we will also look at the learning triangulation to get some idea of how <coughs> uh, this can be how the triangulation of a nodalized domain can be done. Now, we will take a much simpler case than uh, this let us say that we are looking at a domain like this a simple domain and which we have uh, broken up into nodes and in the process of the nodalization we not only have the boundary nodes, but we also have some interior nodes like this. Now, the idea is to join these things 
to make uh, uh, them into uh, triangular uh, elements so that when we join all the triangular elements we can get them together as a as one element and one can immediately see that if one were to do it randomly this and this and this these three can be joined together or this and this can be joined together and this and this can be joined together and uh, which will play havoc with the overall uh, tiling so we have to come up with a rational way of uh, doing this so that that kind of overlapping is uh, is not permitted okay in the advancing front method we start with the boundary that is there and the boundary consists of several edges and this is where we can start with 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 edges we have in this and these are the outer edges are usually put in this uh, counterclockwise way uh, and we can start with for example the first edge we can the first edge could have been here but we have started with this and so this is the first edge and we take any point that is a uh, 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 that is close for example we we want to uh, uh, we take this point here and then we say that this point should be joined with which edges in order to make a triangle for example should i join this and this these three or these three like that which edges should it be joined of course we cannot join with these three points because this point can be joined with only an edge which has already two nodes for example i can join this with these two points or i can join with these two points or i can join with these two or these two like this now the idea is that which edge do i uh, join with uh, uh, with this so i start with this edge here and i'd like to choose that node which is best joined with these two nodes in order to make a triangle so how do i do that i start with this and then i'm looking i already know my counterclockwise direction and i look at all the possible nodes which are to the left of me so that is if i consider this and that all the possible nodes includes the interior nodes and the boundary nodes i look at uh, this point is on the this is the same edge so this is on the same thing so on the same line which means that i cannot join these three to make a, a triangle but i can join with this i can make a triangle by joining these two so this is one one possible triangle so this is one possible node to which i can join this again this is another possible thing this all these points here and these interior points are the possible nodes with which i can make a triangle now out of all these possible nodes i'd like to take that node which is nearest okay which for example if i uh, join with this then i have l1 and l2 and if i join with this i have l3 and l4 so i take l uh, i square plus l j square corresponding to each node and i see which of these is which combination will give me the minimum value okay so the minimum length here and so that node is the node which with which i should like to join them so that i can i can join with the closest node so between so from that point of view if i take this this length plus this length square is obviously much greater than this length and this length so from that point of view all these nodes and all these nodes will be out of uh, uh, contention and one can only seriously consider this node and this node so for these two nodes i evaluate this length square plus this length square and this length square plus this length square and i can see that this node wins over and then i say that this is the node with which i should join these two uh, uh, points of the edge in order to make a triangle so i make a triangle like this so this is my triangle 1 and at this point i say that my boundary for this domain uh, consists of this whole thing and uh, uh, this is not part of the boundary so at the end of making a triangle i redefine my boundary in such a way that i have uh, the overall continuity here 
So, at this point I have made one triangle and I have deleted two edges here which are no longer in contention. I have made uh, now a new front which is advancing towards the uh, best possible node to capture it and form a triangle. So, now again I start with this and I look at all the points which are to the left of me and then see with which I can join and I can see that almost all these points are to the left of me and of all these points joining with this will give me the triangle of the smallest triangle. So, I can I will join this. So, I made a second triangle here and again I take this out this is my now the uh, front here. I can start with this and then look at all the possible uh, nodes which are to the left of me. So, if I take this then all these points are to the left and these points are to the right. So, I do not consider this and I take uh, all these points here and I choose which of them will give me the smallest triangle. So, obviously this one. So, I join this I make one more triangle and then take out these things and then I have my front which is like this. Again I take look at all the possible things and here now I will join these two to make a triangle the fourth triangle I take it out my advancing front is this start with this and obviously these two this should be joined to make the fifth triangle my front is like this. So, I can keep on going uh, in each way at each point I look at the pos all the possible nodes including the boundary nodes and the interior nodes which are to the left of uh, the edge that I am considering and all those qualified nodes are potential uh, mates to join to be joined into a triangle to be formed into a triangle and I take that point that node which gives me the least square of the length. So, that is uh, L i square plus L j square and then use that to form the triangle. So, I join here another triangle is formed and then I define the edge like this and then I can go on here again and then maybe here. So, I can see that each time I am forming a triangle and then I can go on like this. Sometimes we may reach a dead end in which case we have to uh, stop that dead end is possible when uh, for example, you have uh, uh, already come here and you have formed a triangle and there is nothing else for us to go. So, in which case I can go back to one more uh, edge and then start with that continue the process. So, in which way in this way I can redefine my uh, front which is trying to find which is composed of uh, boundary uh, edge elements the boundary uh, is such that it you have some notion of the uh, 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 counterclockwise direction and then for each boundary for each edge you try to find out what is the nearest uh, uh, qualified node with which to form a triangle and then we can continuously do this and then uh, eventually we will get all of them decomposed into triangles. So, this is what is known as the advancing front method. <coughs> in which at any time you have one front consisting of all the uh, nodes on the boundary and uh, those uh, uh, the nodes uh, the edges on this advancing uh, front are to be joined with the available uh, qualified nodes which are to the left of it and uh, by making sure that we are always looking at the uh, left side of it in the counterclockwise direction we can uh, eliminate the possibility of choosing points which lie outside the domain. So, that is how we are trying to uh, deal with a, uh, with a with a concave geometry that is by maintaining directionality in uh, in in uh, the defining the advancing front and also by looking for points which are to the left of this. So, uh, uh, this pro progresses in an element by element 
okay, starting with some edge and then looking at what node is to be done. At uh, uh, so the information that is needed to make an advance here is what are those nodes which form this boundary and the interior which are to the left side of the current edge. And once we do that, and uh, that can be looked at by taking uh, 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 based on the cross product of of uh, uh, this vector and this vector. Uh, so, in that way we can find out and having decided all the possible nodes to the left of this edge, then we try to find out which of them is the nearest node by looking at uh, the length uh, L square, L 1 square and L 2 square for each node and that since we know the boundary points that is x i uh, y i x i y j of all the nodes here, I can, one can easily determine the lengths and then using that we can uh, select the most appropriate one and then go through this. So, this is a good way of progressing with uh, <coughs> triangulation after the nodalization done in this way and this ensures us that we will not take consider points which lie outside the domain. So, that, that uh, triangulation is done in the uh, only with for the interior points and by taking out these nodes as soon as a triangle is formed then we can make sure that we go through the kind of, uh, we can we go through the process until every node is associated with one triangle or other triangle so that there is no uh, node which is left uh, uh, unused and each node is uh, associated uh, uh, into a, a tile in an appropriate way so uh, the essence of the advancing friend method is that it can uh, deal with a complicated geometry in a systematic way and uh, there is some sort of bookkeeping and all that thing, but in terms of actual solution of equations there are none here. We only have algebraic relations to find out which nodes are to the left and which nodes give us the smallest uh, overall length. So, the mathematics part of it is very small both in terms of triangulation and in terms of uh, uh, nodalization, but the logical part of it that is to write a program to do all these uh, uh, checks and balances and all that uh, is more tedious and one needs to be a good programmer in order to uh, uh, make this algorithm work. In the next class we will look at uh, uh, triangulation using the Deloney method, so that we can uh, see what differences we have between the advancing friend method and the Deloney's method.